Inside the Magic, covering Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Universal Studios, and more. Sir of Universal Parks and Resorts, Tom Williams. Thank you uh, very much, all of you, for being here today. Uh, won't you agree, it's a beautiful day in the great state of Florida, the city of Orlando, the county of Orange. And we are so thrilled to spend this special moment with all of you. Very, very happy to be here. So thank you for being here. To say we're excited would be a gigantic understatement. We've got some uh, very important guests with us this morning that I want to introduce to you. The first of whom needs absolutely no introduction. He's the governor of our great state, Governor Ron DeSantis. He's going to be part of our presentation today. So governor, welcome. We are so glad that you are here. Um, Please welcome the governor. And then also with us this morning, playing a very important role in our announcement, is our Orange County Mayor, Jerry Demings. Please, please welcome the He's the, uh, the person that's made all this possible. My boss's boss, the chairman and CEO of Comcast Corporation, Mr. Brian Roberts. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, we've got some terrifically exciting news to share with you. And I've asked our, our chairman, Brian Roberts, to make this special announcement. So Brian, if you will. Thank you, Tom and distinguished guests, it's a really great honor for me to be joining you all today. Um, when Comcast was lucky enough to buy NBC Universal, and my dad had started Comcast some 50 years before, it was a dream come true. One of the things we did not understand or appreciate was how incredible Universal theme parks are and how important they are to everybody's life. We and the opportunity that lay ahead of us. In the last 10 years, I think we've put more investment in the theme parks than any other part of the company. And we are thrilled with where we're at. And Tom and his leadership team are the absolute finest in the business. So today, I'm thrilled to be here to announce that we are going to make the largest investment we've ever made in a park, the largest investment we've ever made, maybe in the state of Florida, in any business and that we're gonna launch Universal's epic universe right here in Orange County. And I will tell you that that will make Florida the largest state for our employees of any of the 50 states in the country. Um, Comcast, as you know, also operates and owns Telemundo in Miami and their headquarters, which just got uh, opened last year the Golf Channel right here in Orlando, and Comcast Cable all over the state with our Xfinity products. Um, regarding Epic Universe, uh, this is the, well, we can't go into the numbers today for various competitive reasons, um, but it, I don't think there's been an announcement like this in over 20 years here, and when you hear the scale of what Tom and Mark Woodbury and their incredible teams have in store for us, so it is my privilege to be here, to be part of this. This is really important to our company. All of the businesses work in concert. We call that symphony. And when you'll see, as if for instance, this weekend, we'll open the new Fast and Furious movie, Hobbs and Shaw, and you see the attraction in the parks. And so it goes and will continue to happen all over the world, headquartered right here. And this new epic universe is incredible. So thank you for letting me join you. It just uh, absolutely blows me away. Universal's epic universe. To say the least, we are very grateful for Comcast's role in our business, not just here in Florida, but around the world. Um, you know, you can't ask for better owners. You can't ask for better leadership. Uh, it's just top notch on every single level. And those of you that follow our parks business know that the growth that we've achieved 
has been mostly since 2010, the timing in which Comcast acquired our business and has allowed us to steadfastly reinvest in its growth, in its employees, in new attractions, new hotels, new restaurants, new shops, and uh, most of all, marketing that lets people around the world know, hey, come to Central Florida for your family vacation. This is the place to be. So Brian, thank you so much for that ongoing support. Epic Universe, uh, you might say, well, this is just an investment in another park. And I gotta tell you, it is so much more than that for so many reasons. One of which is Mark and his team have taken all of our attractions over the last couple of decades. Mark and I have been working together for some 30 years from the very beginning here in, in Orlando. And every single one has been bigger and better than ever, more innovative, more immersive, uh, more storytelling, better characters, better environments. And it's all translated to the industry rave reviews that we get time and time again. TripAdvisor just named Islands of Adventure number one theme park in the world five years in a row. Universal Studios Florida number theme park number three theme park in the world five years well five years multiple years in a row, and then Hollywood even number six. So three of the top six are are Universal parks. Again, made in part possible because of investment, but the creative leadership that Mark Terry and the team provide that allows us to you know build these attractions. So when we think about we're going to do another park. We know that we have an obligation to ourselves, much less tourists from around the world, guests from around the world, to make this the biggest, the best, the most ever, you know, that they've ever seen. And, and take it to a whole no, another level of surprise and delight and, and shared experience that um, will merit, again, repeat visits over and over to this, this marvelous market. So it's in part about growing our reputation and, and satisfying guests, it's a part about building the infrastructure community-wise, business-wise, architects, engineering firms, manufacturing firms that support our business here, that's vitally important to us. And then key to it all is our own team members. I, I'm a strong believer and have for years been in the concept of take good care of our team members, and if we do so, they'll take care of our guests, and if we do that, we're gonna make a fair and reasonable profit that's gonna allow us to reinvest in our community. And so that's what we're gonna do and 14,000 more team members here. We've already got 25,000 that work for Universal right here. And now there's gonna be another 14,000 on top of all that. And their professional jobs, their high tech jobs, and much, much more. We care deeply about our team members, uh, evidenced by our philosophy that I just articulated to you. And part of what I'm pleased to announce to you is that as we move forward by the timing of the park opening, Really, it's more than a park. It's hotels, it's shops, it's restaurants. It's it's a whole resort. Our minimum base rate start of pay will be fifteen dollars an hour. That'll be the base rate. We'll go up from there. <laughs> so that's, that's what to, our, to our employees, you know, nobody's twisted our arm to do this. This is what we believe is appropriate and what we want to do. And again, that's just the starting rate of pay. So our vision is a big one. We want to create a level of experience that frankly forever changes the theme park landscape as you know it today. And over time as we unveil details about it, you're gonna see that the layout is different, the concepts are different, the delivery system, everything that we're thinking about is, this is 2019. What does the future demand that we do being universal creative? So I wanna talk a little bit more about some of the details about the park. I'm not gonna get into a lot because that'll be revealed over time, but I wanna, make a few points. Number one, it's just a few minutes from what's now Universal Orlando Resort. So think of it, you see here on the uh, diagram, a, a north campus, mid campus, which is where Endless Summer is, which is open, open Surfside. Inn and Suites, 750 rooms, another 2,050 rooms gets added to the mid campus Endless Summer Resort next year. That makes 2,800 rooms there. We already have 6,950 place, so that'll make the new total 9,000 rooms that we'll have before Epic Universe. And then to the south, you see Epic Universe. We have a drone shot, we just took it a day or two ago. You can see that a lot of work has been done on this property already. Um, you also see some uh, shots there of uh, the headwaters of the Florida Everglades, Shingle Creek, which we have worked to preserve, and some action steps that we have taken under M Mark Watson's direction ensure that we will make a significant contribution to the, not only the restoration, but 
the continued maintenance of, of our portion of the wetlands that, that serve this headwater. So we're taking it uh, to a whole new level. Uh, the work is continuing and you know it's going to be a one of a kind park that you know, I, you know it's going to blow your mind. I don't, I don't know how else to put it. So it's easy for me to stand here. It's another story from Mark and his team to deliver it. They will then Bill Davis and his fine team will take it from there, and, and Alice Norsworthy, under, under her direction, the marketing will continue, and the world will become well aware of the fact that this is all here, and uh, translate to a tremendous growth opportunity for our community and for our parks business. So that's what that's all about. Now I want to introduce uh, a person, again, needs no introduction, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis, to share some additional remarks from the state's point of view. So, Governor, if yeah. you would, thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks, Tom. I think it's a really, really exciting day. But there's always so many things going on uh, in Orange County. Uh, we were just at, Mayor Demings and I were at the MLS All-Star Game last night. I was meeting with some of the folks about maybe a World Cup site being here in 2026. Um, and obviously, we've, we've always had great events coming here. And I think this area you know, is, has proven itself to be um, a world-class destination for people to come and visit. And uh, you know, today's announcement really, I think, uh, is going to cement that reputation even more. I want to thank uh, Brian Roberts uh, and what they've done, um, you know, not just with the parks, but you know, they have the Golf Channel, a lot of these things that are in Florida. So they've got a, a lot of people that they're employing here. So we, we appreciate uh, what Comcast has done. Um, I also want to thank uh, Tom and the folks at Universal uh, for the money they've put into uh, restoring Shingle Creek. I mean, you know, we're doing all this stuff um, in, in Everglades, and, and, and we're putting resources in. Um, and really, this is the very the very start of it. So so that's uh, I think been uh, been great. Um, and I think that the partnership between the county and Universal has been good. If you look at the amount of economic impact uh, that the parks, even before you get here, I think they did a study at UCF and said when you, um, when um, Universal started until now, it's been like $75 billion in economic impact since 1990. I remember growing up in Florida when Universal was announced to come, that was like a huge deal because you, know, you had, I think, Disney and Epcot. I don't even know if you had anything else yet. Um, and then to have Universal, I was like, wow. And, um, you know, it's been, it's had a huge impact. You see the employment numbers. Um, it certainly helps their tax coffers. They do over $300 million in state and, uh, and local taxes, uh, which is things we use for things like environment um, and, and education. Um, but I think this is going to have this new park is really going to expand the economic footprint. I mean, it's great to see that there's going to be thousands of jobs available. Even some of the, the ones at the bottom are going to start, you know, at, 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 a good, uh, at a good rate. And I know many of those jobs are going to be much more than that. So, so this is exciting, and um, I'm just glad to be here. And love as governor to be able to deliver the message about how great a place Florida is to visit. But certainly, you know, families who in you know, other parts of the country, you know, you got to have your eyes on Orlando as a place to come. I think that has been the case. And, and this new park, man, you're going to be even a, a better destination. So my hat's off to, uh, to Universal and to the locals here. And it's great that um, you, know, you have a mayor here in the county uh, who really understands this and, uh, and is working hard. And it's my pleasure to, to bring him up, say a few words. Yeah. Good morning. It is an epic day in Orange County. <laughs> I'm honored to be here, and uh, I am joined by some pretty dynamic uh, county commissioners uh, who are here. Uh, please give them a round of applause. <laughs> we are also joined by our senior staff here who will be working to ensure that this project gets done uh, on time. Uh, and uh, first, let me say thank you to Universal Orlando Resort for being a longtime partner with Orange County. For more than 30 years now, Universal has understood the importance of growing public-private partnerships. This morning's announcement will continue that relationship as uh, we grow our region's tourism and business corridors. Along with Universal's increased contribution of state and local taxes, I like that part pretty good, uh, which will nearly double 
This new theme park will create many more employment opportunities throughout the entire region, including jobs in construction, skilled trades, engineering and modeling and simulation. Fostering this growth, Orange County is making an investment to strengthen uh, the customer service by streamlining the building uh, permit and inspection processes by creating on-site permitting here at the Orange County Convention Center. This will enable us to serve all of the International Drive expansion initiatives, including uh, this new theme park. We're also investing in improving transportation and access to the tourism corridor. In addition to Orange County's investment in the Kirkman Road project, Universal has provided $160 million of additional funding. The extension of the project will connect Carrier Drive on the north all the way to uh, the convention center on the south. This road extension will improve regional mobility in this area and increase local accessibility to the transportation network that supports the entire area covered by Orange County's International Drive District Plan. Including this new theme park for Universal, the Orange County Convention Center, Lockheed Martin, and the UCF Rosen School of Hospitality Management, the growth and innovation in Orange County is exponential and epic. <laughs> Thank you again, Universal, for helping lead the way. We are excited about this upcoming adventure. And now I'll turn it back over to Mr. Williams. <laughs> appreciate a two decade long relationship with you going all the way back to when he was chief of the Orlando Police Department and then of course sheriff and now in this terrific role providing the terrific leadership that you do so thank you you know that that uh, concludes our remarks uh, obviously we're excited we're uh, again thrilled that you're all here this is a really big deal to us and I hope it is to all of you it deserves to be it's gonna be great for the county great for the state great for Universal theme parks and therefore NBC Universal as well as Comcast so, that concludes our uh, organized remarks. Um, we're prepared to take uh, a few uh, questions and hopefully provide some answers that will satisfy you. Allison? Yes, we have our first question from Richard with the Orlando Business Journal. Morning, Richard. Hi, this is a, probably more of a design question, but hopefully they let you in on the details. Um, specifically, um, can you talk a little bit about what you've heard in terms of a big balance between um, physical elements in the theme park design as well as digital elements. We've seen kind of a balance, a marriage between the two already in your guys' design throughout the park. Um, what can you say we can expect as far as that? That's something a lot of fans like to see, how those two different types of designs are married. Yeah. Together. No, I appreciate your question. And, and there's three key ingredients as you think about designing a, a park experience, one of which you begin with the environment. And hopefully there's an environment that, that people are familiar with and find to be quite exciting, an opportunity to be immersed, perhaps in a world, in a land, that they have come to be very you know, affectionate with, uh, through books, through movies, through TV shows. So they know it well and they want to find a way to be in it. They watch the, they watch the movie or read the book, now they want to be actually in the environment. So one, one is uh, how, how important the environment is, and of course, the second is the characters. So, you know, hopefully they're characters that people of all ages and gender and ethnicities identify with. You know, so that there's, I can be part of this along with, you know, a character that they know and love. And then the final piece is storytelling. How, you know, and ideally you're, you're, you're telling in a new and different way a story that they're familiar with but, and therefore have a background on, but now you can take it to a whole other level. Well, that gets to what you're talking about, Richard. Because this is where, you don't do technology just for the sake of technology. It makes no sense. It has to serve a greater purpose. So if technologies avail an opportunity to tell a story, advantaging the characters and the environment in a way that really sucks you in, as it were, and, and, and makes you be part of it all, that's when you use it. So there's no formula, there's nothing no that says, well, you know, 50% needs to be digital, or nothing like that. It, it more gets back to telling the story in the most effective way. And when that's needed, we use technology. And I hope that that's very evident to you as you see the ways that we have delivered, just as an example, you know, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, or for that matter, you know, 
the Hagrid, the brand new Hagrid magical you know, creature in Forbidden Forest experience. So we'll continue to do that. Uh, this may be hooked for uh, this may be more of a focused uh, question. Huge Nintendo fan, where my Mario thoughts say, can we expect that? <laughs> <laughs> what a great question. Thank you. Is there another? <laughs> Good morning. Amanda Dukes from West Ham. Yeah, I know you well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, when we hear Epic Universe, I think the burning question everyone wants to know this morning is what are some of the themes? I mean, we've heard speculation about Nintendo, Jurassic Park. Can you shed any light on what people can look forward to and also a potential opening date? Yeah, I, you know, you, I expect you to ask both of those questions and along with it, how much is it going to cost? And, um, <laughs> how much will it cost? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bob and weave my way through that minefield and, and avoid giving you a direct answer. And this because of competitive pressure. You're well aware of the competitive nature of uh, this Orlando marketplace. You know, it's we're all battling for the time of a visiting yeah, guest, you know, uh, to come to our location and to uh, frankly share the details of what we have in mind with the competition is something that, you know, we have no interest in doing. I can guarantee you it's going to be epic. And the last I heard, a universe is a little bit bigger than a world. So take it for what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Good morning, Greg Angel with Spectrum News 13. It kind of right on that point, acres available for development back then when you talk about the package of this theme park yes. shopping resorts and so forth yes. this package epic universe is that going to develop all the 541 acres or are you leaving some aside for even further development in the years after epic no, universe no there'll be plenty of room for downstream development and we're contemplating that that will definitely be the case other questions Shelly Karen from uh, WFTV's IC Florida. Can you expand on the transportation investments that Universal is making to the Orange County? Yeah, I'd be happy to. I mean, I, I, as um, the governor was speaking about the, uh, the interchange that will take place at uh, Sand Lake Boulevard and the, most importantly, the extension of Kirkman Boulevard, or Kirkman Road, right, I should say, which as you know now stops at Sand Lake uh, Road. So there will be an interchange that will allow the easy flow of Kirkman under, over, through uh, Sand Lake Road and then Sand Lake Boulevard and then take everybody down to our resort and eventually uh, terminate at Universal Boulevard, which is yet another route to get down to our location. So, you know, we are we are providing the majority of the funding for that extension as well as for the interchange. And so it's a big step. And we've got some very distinct thoughts about how we can facilitate the ease of movement of our guests between the North, Mid and South Campus between Universal Orlando Resort, as you know it today, down to Endless Summer, and then all the way down to Universal's Epic Universe. So without getting into details, we thought that through. And the, the transport time between the two locations is about, about 12 minutes, not to be precise. Not to put a pin in it. <laughs> so I think we thought it through pretty well. And, and we're a major contributor to make that happen. And, and, and are enjoying a, a tremendous amount of support from both the state, because Kirkman Road is a state road. But then it continues into it's always in Orange County, but it continues under Mayor Deming's direct control, and so we're working closely with the county and the state on that. And those, those, all that approval is behind us, so we're moving forward. We have time for about two more questions. Hi, Jeff Beal with WFTV here in Orlando. Can you talk to us about uh, the types of themed lands, or and how many themed lands will be within this one park? <laughs> You know, I, I would love to because it would blow you away, but I'm not going to. <laughs> it really would. I, but we will over time. We're gonna, on our website, we'll have, you know, epic reveals and in, in timing that we think advantages, spreading the word about what it's going to be, keeping in mind that we don't want to disadvantage visitation between now and this date and in the future. We want people to continue to come in heavy number to Central Florida. So we'll, we'll think that through. We have thought it through, and we'll be timing out those type of announcements. I'm not trying to dodge your question, but I am. <laughs> I have to. Final question. Hi, Robert Guadarrama, Hi, Robert. 35 News. Uh, there have been talks about the Virgin Train extending to go straight to Disney World, uh, but there's also talk about it maybe coming up here and stopping at the convention center. How much is Universal pushing for that second option? The second, I mean, with their, every bit of uh, strength that we've got. I mean, Orange County has invested a tremendous amount of money in building the second largest convention center in the United States of America, and one of the most heavily attended convention centers in the United States of America. 
right here, right where we're standing, the Orange County you know, Convention Center. It's only logical for so many reasons to have the train come from South Florida to the airport, from the airport to the Convention Center, then go down to Disney, sure. But not direct. You can't bypass the Convention Center. It makes absolutely no sense. It ignores the investment that's been made here. It ignores the whole purpose of, of drawing visitation on behalf of the Convention Center in the first place. What is more logical than a, than a conventioneer being able to fly into the airport and then get on a train and five minutes later they're at the Convention Center? I mean, and then you want to make another turn to the south and go to Disney? Fine. You want to continue on to there to Tampa? Good. Good. A lot of hurdles, as you know. You know, financial hurdles, ridership hurdles, technology, and so forth. But we, we definitely hope it all happens. Great, thank you so much. Um, that concludes our Q&A and our press conference. Our presenters are gonna stay upstage for a quick photo. Thank you guys so much for coming out.